Hi, I'm Matt. Um, I'm with Armando. We're from Google, and we're going to talk about how to create C++ toolchains easily. Oh. Oh, boy. Clicker's not. Oh, OK, that worked. Um, OK, so uh, if there's one thing I want you to get away from this talk, it's that it's easier than ever to create uh, maintainable and high quality C++ toolchains. So let's ask the obvious question first. What is a toolchain? In Bazel, people think of it as something very confusing, but quite simply, like at its core, the idea is simple. All a toolchain does is it converts Bazel targets into build actions, right? And so what we've done is we've made a new mechanism to create C++ toolchains. So some concepts are the same and others have changed. I'm going to explain a bunch of concepts to you. If you're not familiar with C++ toolchains, awesome. If you are familiar with C++ toolchains, some of it is not going to be what you're used to, right? So how does C++ toolchain work? Well, we start off with this CC library, right? And the very first thing that happens is we turn that into a CC info provider, right? That's done by the CC library rule. You don't need to worry about it. The next thing that happens is that this CC, li this CC library provider, uh, CC info provider, is then converted into uh, what I'm going to call action templates, right? Um, and so these action templates, they're not necessarily a one-for-one -one mapping. So for example, a CC binary is going to have both a uh, link action template and a compile action template, right? And finally, the action templates are combined with your toolchain configuration to get a actual action, right? And that is what we're going to be talking about in this talk, right? We're specifically going to be talking about how to define toolchain configuration easily. So this is the inputs to our, um, to our action. So this is the action template, if you will, right? Um, it consists of two things. This thing here is the action type, right? The action type might be C compile, it might be CPP compile, might be link a static executable. Roughly speaking, it's some type of objective, right? It's what you want to do in this action. Um, they're often grouped together. So for example, it's very rare that you, well, maybe not rare, but you, it's not necessarily often that you want to, say, for example, do something on, only on a, CP, on a C compile action, for argument's sake. You would probably want to say, oh, yeah, I want to do it in all compile actions. So they're very often grouped together and referred to by groups. The second thing here is build variables. Build variables are just basically key value pairs, and they are mostly useless on their own, and we're just going to mostly read from them and put them on the command line um, later. So that's our inputs. So what we do here is we create a toolchain configuration. This is read by rule CC, and it outputs a rule. So it outputs an action. Um, an action is made up of three things. It's made up of a command line, it's made up of input files, and it's made up of output files, right? So this action, I'm going to explain it a bit more now. So here is the bits which are relevant to C++ specifically. So we have a tool here. A tool is just a Bazel executable. You're probably all pretty familiar with this. It's always in the exact configuration, and it can be associated with specific action types. So for example, your compilation actions would be handled by Clang, and your link actions might be handled by your linker, right? Um, next we have args, right? Args are basically just arguments to be added to the command line. They're added in little groups. So you hear, see here that the dash o lib.o is one arg, as, uh, like, as we call it. So um, they're associated with action types. So specific action types require specific args. For example, when you're compiling, you're going to need your input files. Um, and when you're like doing other things, you're going to need different things, right? Um, they can often use build variables. So we see here this lib.o is one of our build variables, right? Um, and they can be coupled with run files. This is a bit of a weird thing for people who haven't used this before. But like, we have the idea of, say, for example, if you have the dash dash sysroot arg, then you're going to need the sysroot to be provided for it to work. So we add the run file for the sysroot. Um, next, we have features. I sort of lied to you earlier. And the args, the, the last one here, was not actually an arg. Args are like unconditionally added to the command line. Features are conditional, right? So this last one here is not an arg. It's an arg which is wrapped by a feature, right? So features contain args, and they're toggleable, right? So this is how we can do things under certain conditions. In this particular case, we have the opt feature. The opt feature, um, Bazel will provide it for you when you actually are doing uh, optimized uh, compilation, right? So when you're doing that, this is going to be provided, and we're going to add dash o2 to the command line, right? Um, Features can have relationships, uh, implies, requires. You can do mutual exclusion. Um, that sort of stuff is like it was already there in the old toolchain. So yeah. So the way that the legacy toolchain approach, the legacy 
toolchain configuration approaches this is that toolchains are configured by custom rules, right? So here is an example I've written. Um, and I want to do an exercise with you all. Um, so when you're confident that this works, put your hands up, right? So what happens when we run this? Well, we initially run this, and we see none type has no attribute. Uh, can't say that. Yeah. Oh, oh, no attribute append, right? So the reason for this is because it turns out that, uh, oh, one of our branches doesn't have a return statement. So we can fix that, right? And now, does it work? Well, turns out, no. Foo Mac doesn't appear, right? And the reason for this turns out to be, well, we had a typo here, right? This should be link underscore static, as you can see on the few lines above, right? And so does it work now? Well, still no. We didn't actually use this link static thing, so we're actually requiring a, a feature that doesn't actually exist, right? So we can fix those now. Does it work now? Oh, uh, we see dash dash foo instead. Huh, we go into the wrong thing. And the reason for this is very nebulous. Probably no one will be seeing it here. And the reason is that should be Mac OS X, right? And so now we can fix that. And now does it work? Yeah, it does. Uh, but how many of you have your hands up? <laughs> I didn't see anyone. <laughs> how many of you had confidence that it worked, right? Um, so this is what we're trying to solve. And we also are trying to solve a few other things while we're at it, right? There are a few questions you could have, right? So. If a user, not a toolchain author, just a regular user, wants to know why is dash dash static on the command line, then it should be easy for them to work out. If the toolchain author wants to add link static but not foo to their features, that should be easy to do. Um, if, a tool chain, uh, if a regular person wants to know what does foo do, that should be easy to do, right? So we came into here with a few objectives. We wanted to make a toolchain that was safe, we wanted to make a toolchain that was simple, and we wanted to make it modular, right? And so, build files. Build files are safe, right? Because if you write a build file, you have trust that it works without ever actually writing a test for the build file itself. Build files are simple. All of you are very familiar with how to write build files. They're very easy to read, right? And build files are modular. They're literally made of modules. So let's look at this comparison. Here, the difference is with the old version, we'd use a string. And with the new version, we'd use a label, right? So because of that, if there's a typo, then it just gives us an error. If there's a missing reference, if there's a feature that doesn't exist, it gives us an error. Um, if we pass in the, a label of the wrong type, it'll give us an error. This will only take a feature or a feature set, right? They're simple. Hands up if you think that this works. Feel free to take a bit of time. I see one person. <laughs> I see some hands here and there. Whatever it is, it's more than before, and you had plenty more time before to work it out, right? So this thing is easy to read, right? Everyone is, like, it's, you're very used to reading build files. It's easy to trust. This part is very crucial. Confidence that your thing works is actually very useful. <laughs> and it's easy to trace, um, because, yeah, now, if I want to see what does foo do, oh, I can just go, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go, oh, yeah, my Mac OS X? No? OK, then that, right? And there's one toolchain for all platforms. This one is something you're probably used to seeing if you've written a toolchain. You might have a different toolchain for ARM, one for x86 here. And because we're using a select, we can just go, oh, I want to use this toolchain. And it does its branching and works out what to do for each platform. Um, there is one little bug in Bazel, which means that if you try and use platforms incompatible to prevent your toolchain working on platforms you haven't got it working for, then it will actually throw some errors at you. Um, but other than that, um, yeah. So modular. This is modular because we have rules and providers that ensure like clear API boundaries. Anyone can write a thing that provides that provider, and they know it's going to be compatible with somebody else's, right? This means that I can write a s args, right, and anyone else can import my repository, and they can use write a features that wraps it, for example, right? Um, it means that you can use the same target for a variety of platforms. We talked about this earlier. And the decisions in our tool chain have been delegated to the correct person. For example, previously, features, um, the person writing the feature decided whether to, to enable it or not, probably because it was assumed that that person is the tool chain author. But in reality, the feature is kind of its own separate thing, and the tool chain should be deciding whether or not it's enabled. Uh, you want to come on up, Armando? Um, so yeah, 
I'm now going to hand it off to Armando to talk about um, how to use the toolchain. All right. OK. Thank you so much. Uh, OK, so how many of you guys work in a project that has C++? Raise your hand. OK, that's a lot of you. How many of your projects, keep your, uh, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. OK, put your hand down uh, if your project does not have a custom toolchain configuration. OK, so you all have custom toolchain configurations. Cool. Uh, keep your hand up if you have ever modified it. OK, keep your hand up if you actually understand your full toolchain configuration. <laughs> a lot of hands just went down, OK? Cool. OK, so we have a, a, few, a few hands up. And that's important here because this is important for you guys too because what you're going to see up here, it's very relevant to you as well, OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through an example of how you might try to build a tool chain using the new stuff here. Uh, and um, it's particularly interesting because uh, it, it's, it's a bit of an experience that we're going through. It's not just like, a, oh, this is a, an example, a full example that you'll look at. Uh, so what we have here is the first building blocks that you'll start with. So uh, when you're working in Bazel, you want to start a new tool chain, you have this tool chain rule. And this is the same for every single rule out there. It tells you what kind of tool chain you're going to have. Uh, so in this case, we have a C++ tool chain. And it is pointing to this thing underneath that will say, OK, cool, I want to start making a CC tool chain. So what am I going to reach for? I'm going to reach for this CC tool chain rule. Uh, so what happens if you do this? Well, it doesn't work. And that's because this is uh, it will give you this nice little error that says, it's missing a mandatory attribute called toolmap in your CC toolchain config. Uh, so if you look up the API or, or you ask Gemini, uh, hopefully it will tell you that, uh, that you need this thing called a CC toolmap. So what does that look like? This is a CC tool map. So we have our CC tool chain pointing to a CC tool map. And uh, this is just a mapping of actions that Matt mentioned before, um, uh, mapping to various tools. So this is a little bit simplified, to be honest. Uh, but it, it looks basically like this. So um, we have, we have our, our C compile action is mapped to Clang. C++ is mapped to Clang++. And AR is mapped to LVM AR. Uh, now, normally, you would have a bunch more actions mapped here. And also, in the case of like compilers, typically you need more than just the binary. You need like built-in headers and whatever. Uh, but we'll get to an example of that a little, a little bit later. Uh, but the key thing here is this is actually almost exactly what you need to make a working tool chain. Uh, what is missing here? So we have tools. There's one key thing missing. What happens if you run Clang? Nothing. Because you need arguments. So we're going to add this thing that is a feature and is called uh, experimental replace legacy action config features, which is just a long way of saying uh, Bazel knows how to do this, and we're going to hook that in for now. Um, this is actually in a transitionary state. Uh, we have some of the built in stuff that is baked into Java, translated into these new rules. Uh, so you could actually introspect exactly what Bazel is doing. And also, it is versioned independently of Bazel. So it is actually in the Starlog files, uh, not Starlog, sorry, build files. Uh, that you could read and you could uh, check out or make modifications to update whatever it may be. Uh, and, uh, and that is no longer tied directly to Bazel, but once again, it's in a transitionary state. So this actually gets us a working tool chain. And if you don't believe me, this is an example from rule CC. So there's a few more things in it, but the important thing is it still fits on a whole slide. Uh, and part of this is because we split things out in a way that allows us to share things and move things to different parts of the build file, move ownership of things, and, uh, and make it so that our core configuration is actually extremely simple. So you can see what happens here with this tool chain. The big thing that we added is this thing called args. And these are all our tool chain arguments. And it's just like what you would have in like other build systems. Oh, it's a shame on me for mentioning those. But in the simple cases of like CXX ops for, uh, for Bazel, or like if you go into CMake, that's how you would easily set a few arguments on the command line. It's a similar sort of thing. We have we have very easy way to just bind arguments to a tool chain. And you can see up here, we have this select that says, if I am targeting Linux, I'll use a Linux sysroot. And then underneath here, we have uh, these two simpler arguments. So we're going to actually expand this. This is the one thing that you really need uh, to, make, uh, to make Clang happy, in particular with Bazel, just because of built-in headers. Uh, but the warnings here is a fun one to expand because it's very simple. So taking a look at this, uh, who thinks they can understand what's happening here? Raise your hand if you think, yeah, yeah, we're seeing more hands go up. That's good, that's good. So all that's happening here is we're saying for all of our C compile actions and all of our C++ compile actions, we're going to add these arguments to the command line. 
And this just happens top to bottom when you're looking at your toolchain configuration. It expands all these arguments in order. That's not something that happens by accident. That is an API contract. It tells you, hey, I'm going to expand these in order. And you can be sure if you add your arguments in these order, it is going to be expanded in that order. Oh, that's so nice, isn't it? <laughs> Simple. Um, OK, cool. So we also have these things called features. Uh, features, Matt mentioned before, they're basically just wrappers around arguments that allow you to dynamically toggle them. So for example, pick, if you need to dynamically toggle that throughout your build, you'll wrap it in this thing called a feature. Features can have very complex relationships. Once again, those of you that fully understand your toolchain configuration, this matters to you because you understand that this is a complexity that's necessary, even though uh, it does make things significantly more complicated sometimes. Uh, okay, cool. And there's some other fun things you could do in arguments as well. Uh, so once again, going over to transitioning between the built-in stuff in Bazel and converting it into build rules. This is an example. Linker param file. This is what's known as a legacy feature. And this is the actual implementation. Uh, and what happens here is Matt was talking about when you have these different templates uh, for various actions, they have these variables. And they need to be expanded somehow into command line arguments. This is how it's done. Uh, so we have here the, uh, the format expression here just says, find this expression for param file inside of our argument and expand it using that variable. So once again, if you are not familiar with tool chains in very deep, deep detail, just don't think about this. Let it fall out of your head. For those of you that are familiar, this is important. And you have access to this in this new mechanism. All right. So, that is actually all the core constructs. It is that simple. You basically just have a few things in your, in your toolbox that you can use to put together these tool chains and actually start rolling them out. So it's as simple as I have a tool chain configuration, I have some tools, I map them to my tool chain, and then I add arguments as I see fit. Way simpler than it was before. And it's also way safer, too, because it's, you know, we have all these different types that are, that are protecting you from using things incorrectly. Uh, so we use these in Pigweed. Um, this, is, this is an example where we've actually deployed in a couple different ways. Uh, we have a single tool chain that supports both Linux and Mac OS. Uh, and this is, our, this is kind of what we use for you know, just to vendor our own tool chain. Uh, so we deployed this there for that use case, which is a good one. Uh, it has interoperability with Rust and Go, uh, which is particularly important for those of you that have multi-language repositories. Uh, and uh, we have separate toolchain definitions. So Matt mentioned that you could have one toolchain definition for everything. Another direction you could go is you could also have separate ones, but share most of the core. So all of the warnings that we enable for our project are shared between these different uh, toolchain configurations just by saying, OK, this is our block of arguments for warnings. Everybody use that block of arguments for warnings. Uh, so very easy. Um, uh, also, this is interesting where these rules originally came from. We, uh, we spent some time experimenting with them in Pigweed. Uh, we deployed them in a handful of different projects, figured out where the pain points were, and then we upstreamed them into Rule CC. Uh, if you're curious more about Pigweed, you can check out pigweed.dev. Uh, Ted had a talk yesterday. Hopefully, that was an entertaining talk, but we love embedded stuff, so you could tell why we are particularly interested in configuring our tool chains, just how we like them. Um, OK, here's an example from Pigweed, uh, an example of our host tool chain that targets both Linux and Mac OS. You can see there's a select here here, and that is for the target platform. When you're going through your arguments, pretty much all the selects that you'll see are for the target platform. There's some ways you could jump out of that, but you, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, you can see up here we have a couple interesting things. Uh, there's our Go interop flags, which use features to communicate with Go to tell when we're linking anything from Go. Uh, we have some similar stuff for Rust that tells us when we need to turn off certain flags because they're incompatible with Rust. Uh, and then we have our Mac OS specific stuff. And you can see that we have some flags for libtool Darwin, which is unique to Mac OS and we don't use for Linux. And we also have our Mac OS sysroot, which is actually just Xcode. OK. And we also rolled this out to Raspberry Pi's Pico SDK. Uh, so the use case here is a little bit different because we want to have, uh, we kind of just are more interested in providing a pre-canned experience for you grab the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK, try to build it with Bazel, and you get tool chains out of the box so that you have a good experience. Because the last thing you want to do is have someone try out your project, and uh, they have an old version of a tool chain, or they're missing the right tool chain. For example, ARM None EABI GCC. If they don't have that installed, they'll have some issues trying to compile for ARM. So we have vendor toolchain configurations for both ARM and EABI GCC and Clang. And these support both Cortex M0 Plus and M33. So Pigweed has different configurations, but sort of supporting similar targets. And RISC-V is coming soon. So we'll be able to have a single Clang configuration that just has slightly different flags for, uh, for ARM and RISC-V. And everything else from the configuration is just shared. 
So uh, also, one of the other fun things that is particularly unique to the Raspberry Pi Pico SDK is we support cross-compiling from Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, which is a special child. Um, so, so there's some stuff that we had to do in the P Pico SDK to make Windows happy, and we did that there. Uh, hopefully, at some point here, we'll have Windows support in Pigweed, but that's not quite today for Bazel because there's a lot of things we need to sort out. So. This is what that looks like. So I mentioned that there are some places in your tool chain where you will be doing a select based off of the exact configuration. This is it. So when you are specking out your tools, uh, this is a real example of what you would actually do for your Clang tool. So you can see there's two things of interest here. The first one is a select on the exact configuration saying, if I am compiling from, Clang, or from Windows, I need to use clang.exe because it has the exe extension. Otherwise, I just can use Clang with no extension because other operating systems don't have extensions. So once again, if I am cross-compiling from Windows, so this is the exact configuration. Uh, and then the other interesting thing, he thing here is the data that we have attached to this tool. So this is just a more complex way of expressing a tool. Normally, with a tool map, you could, uh, for simpler tools like, like AR, it doesn't have any associated files. So you could just bind it directly to your tool chain. Uh, for Clang, because you need to include headers, and then there's that LLVM binary, which is like our, uh, our you know, busy box style sort of way to, uh, to make the toolchain distribution smaller. Uh, those need to be brought into the sandbox as well. And fun fact, if you just attach them as data files to this tool, you don't have to worry about the old mechanism for like compile files versus AR files versus. You don't have to think about any of that. It's done by the binding, by saying, hey, when I compile, I need this tool, and it has these associated files. The toolchain configuration just picks that up automatically. So also. One last thing I want to highlight here is living example in Rule CC. Uh, Rule CC has a full API for this, and also importantly, it has a uh, a rule-based toolchain that is a living example that is part of the CI for Rule CC. So you know that that is always going to be a good example to pull from if you are curious how to do this and deploy this in your own project. So you always check that out. That is part of CI. Uh, and also, we're interested in adding m even more documentation. We want to make sure that this is approachable for as many people as possible, because we really do think that owning a toolchain configuration is a valuable thing, and it's only good to own something that you know how to maintain. So good documentation is very important to us, uh, including like we are hoping to add a migration guide and a few other bits and bobs. Uh, but please reach out if you have any questions. We're very interested in making sure that this is helpful to everybody. So uh, there's also some other quick things I want to highlight. Uh, generalizing this to other languages is something that can be, uh, is, is an area of interest for us, because these concepts, as Matt mentioned at the beginning, are kind of generic to how Bazel works. And the idea of expressing tool chains in this way uh, for other languages is very possible. Um, however, we haven't quite yet gotten to that point. We have seen some interest from other rule set owners in, in respect to like, the work we've done here and uh, thinking about how it might apply to the language that their repository uh, provides rules for. So we're, w this may at some point extend beyond rule CC into other languages. Kind of depends on the pickup and how people uh, end up adopting it. Uh, also, uh, there are some, uh, as I mentioned before, there are some arguments that are baked into Bazel that we want to kind of move out into this world so that you could see them easier. You could update your toolchain configurations independently of your Bazel version, things like that. Uh, Windows does not have examples. Uh, Windows is, like, targeting Windows is kind of complex and uh, requires some very different handling. So um, we have to do that. Uh, we'll have to do that a little bit later, but we're interested in that as well because people do compile code using Bazel on Windows sometimes. I know it's, it's scary, but it happens. Uh, okay, and that is pretty much it. If you are interested, please, please come talk to us. We're very interested in sharing this and evangelizing this, and we hope you're interested as well. Uh, special thanks. You come on up, Matt. Uh, special thanks to Evo, who reviewed a lot of this, and uh, we spent we threw many CLs at him, many many CLs. So thank you, Evo, for that, uh, and also Ted and Nat, who uh, were part of the very early discussions that kind of sparked this whole idea, uh, and they provided design feedback along the way. So thank you to them as well. Okay. Can you hear me? Oh. Thanks for the talk. So you said this is still kind of in progress. Um, is it already? the basic version ready where you would recommend to migrate to it, or would you say there's a feature you should definitely wait for? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, all the rules are done. So everything is there. It's available. Uh, you could use it. We've spent we've spent quite a bit of time using it. Uh, it it's been it's been rolled out to a, a bunch of different contexts. So at this point, we are very much in the perspective of we we really believe that everything that you need should be there, and we want to know if it's not. So please go try it out. Uh, the thing that is work in progress is that shim that that experimental use whatever uh, that piece is currently in a in a transitional state. Uh, so that is one thing that I would say is probably going to see the most change. Um, also, at the moment, we kind of did it assuming you would be starting a toolchain from scratch. If you want to migrate from the existing toolchains to the new version, we don't necessarily have a 100% like this is how you should do it just yet. Um, but if you're starting a new tool tray from scratch, then yeah, definitely. Hi, awesome talk, thank you. And uh, I wanted to ask about, is there anything from the Bazel side where we need you know, API changes to accommodate this uh, whole thinking? One thing I could think of was, uh, so features right now is actually, a, they apply to every single target. Yeah, every single target you can say features equals a random list yeah. of strings. And uh, yeah, the label-based thing is really nice. I uh, wonder if we should change Bazel to do that? I don't know, yeah. I don't have a clear. So but. I think that, to be honest, um, I would perfectly be very happy if it wasn't for backwards incompatibility issues, completely dropping features from Bazel, because we have seen that you can implement features in Starlock without any, like, anything in core Bazel. So yeah, but obviously backwards incompatibility, probably not gonna be an easy job. Uh, I would love to see users being able to write features equals this label instead of a string. That would be awesome. Yeah. It'd be so much easier to be like, oh, what is this? At the moment, it's kind of like, I have no idea. Yeah, you have to go in the yeah. tool chain definitions to see what the string maps to. But anyhow, like, is there any other, um, you know, Bazel well, I think Bazel provides all the abstractions API. you need. It's like. OK, it's all good already. Yeah, we're all, all right, good. Good to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Um, the first thing that came to mind seeing like toolchain configuration go into build files is like, could you start writing test targets to test your build, like your toolchain configuration? Have you found that like <laughs> testing the configuration is needed or is it like mostly correct by inspection? We have already done that to some extent. Like there are some tests in rule CC for it. Um, but I think that for the most part, like correct by inspection kind of thing, I would personally err on the side of rather than testing the toolchain configuration, I would test the actions that come out of it. So for example, I would have a test, like I would have just like a simple hello world CC binary, CC yeah. test, uh, and, sorry, CC binary and CC library, and verify that the command line that is provided is correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the one thing we haven't quite gotten uh, like full integration test for is this idea of okay, I want to make sure that when I migrate tool chains, uh, I have like a one-to-one -one match of how the arguments end up on the command line. We're interested in that. It's just it's very difficult to try and unwind the insides of Bazel to make that happen. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yes. Also, part of that problem is that at the moment we actually like transpile to the old method under the hood, so we kind of would love it, like once rule CC is eventually fully in Starlock, then we could just not do that and it'd be so much easier. See ya. Cool, uh, this looks really awesome. One thing that I frequently do is just like, really just need to, like need a couple of tiny tweaks to the tool chain, like I don't know, different source fortification level or whatever. Sorry, could you speak up? Oh yeah, sure, sure. So what I frequently find myself doing is making small tweaks to the tool chain. So like, I don't know, just changing the default fortification level. Um, do you think your work will make that easier? Because like at the moment that's really difficult because of the conflict being encoded in like a string that's a text serialized proto. I think that in general that kind of thing should be much easier. You could, for example, do a like create a custom string flag on the command line. Uh, so like a string flag in the Bezel build file, and then you could just like do a select based on that. You could just change it with that. Or you know, it's just generally. I think the crucial thing that would help you there is honestly just like you would be able to find out where it's added relatively easily, I think. So yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, are you planning to migrate local config CC to generate tool chains using these rules? Uh, the the built-in um, tool chains that Bazel generates for for the local system, are you planning to migrate that to use these rules? Ah, uh, so I think there's definitely interest in that. Um, right now, we're kind of focusing on 
converting bits and pieces of that generated stuff into the rule set first so that you have access to that and you don't have to rely on Bazel's generation to get access to that. Uh, and then I suspect at some point there will be interest in just making the generation stuff use those directly instead. Uh, one thing I'd like to add is that I personally, this is my own thoughts, I would like to see us completely get rid of the concept of a default C++ toolchain and instead just like similar to how other languages do it with their module extensions, they just say, oh yeah, here is the way you can register a C++ toolchain which is you know, safe and hermetic by default. So yeah. Thanks. Uh, we're out of time, so. <laughs> so th um, oh, okay, we can take one more. Yeah, thank you guys for making this is really exciting. But uh, first question, hopefully a small one. Uh, what's the oldest version of Bazel that you've tested this with? I think Bazel should be fine. Oh, you know. Uh, yeah, I believe we have a hard requirement for some version 7. Uh, don't remember off the top of my head, but there was, there were some changes to Bazel that, uh, that affect the behavior. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, because not everything in rule CC has been Starlarkified yet, we kind of just unfortunately have dependencies on that. Uh, so I, I believe it's somewhere in the 7 range. Okay. And the other question, if it's this easy, what happens when users start defining their own build rules and checking in their own compiler binaries and generating outputs and then trying to cross-link them with other compiler outputs with the wrong different flags and then things explode. Ah, uh, uh, so I, I don't think that is really solved by this uh, in that, you know, like, un unfortunately, like, you can't really control that in, in, a, in a way that, like, protects you. Uh, but hopefully the, the ability to introspect these is a lot easier and intuitive in a way that makes people feel empowered to use it instead of, you know, resorting to other mechanisms to build those binaries. <laughs> Thanks. Right, thank you guys so much.